Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're going to talk about scorpion tailed geckos and how to care for them. So this right here is a scorpion tailed gecko. Scientific name is a Pristorius carteri. So they get their common name as a scorpion tailed gecko because of that tail that they have. These are definitely one of my favorite types of geckos out there. And they are so underrated in the reptile community. Like, look at these little guys. They have a scorpion tail. They have a bird looking face. Like, these guys are outstanding little geckos. And just look at that little face. It just makes you fall in love as soon as you look at them. Look at that. They have huge eyes as well. <laughs> They're awesome little guys. When these geckos feel threatened, they will curl their tails up like this and mimic the movement of a scorpion. So they'll just wave it back and forth trying to tell the predator like, hey, back off, I'm dangerous. But in reality, these geckos are harmless. They just have that bright red tail uh, for defense mechanisms and also to attract females. They will also do that same movement with the tails to attract females during breeding season. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this little gecko back because of the super bright light. So I put him back in his enclosure so that this ring light doesn't bother him. But before we get to the care video, let's go over some general information about these scorpion-tailed geckos. These geckos come from Saudi Arabia and Oman. The males are slightly lighter in color than the females, which can range from a gray, brown, tannish, whitish color. They have those colors to match the environment, the desert in Saudi Arabia just so they can camouflage away from predators. And the males are a little bit larger than the females. So you guys saw the scorpion tail that they have. With them being geckos, they can drop their tails. That beautiful spiky tail that they have, yes, they will drop that if they feel threatened to escape. So unfortunately, it does not grow back exactly the same. Basically, it's like a little white stump that doesn't look the same at all. Um, I really like my tail on his, so I'm trying my best not to handle him as often. And also, um, but he's really tame by the way. I try not to handle him as often and also not to scare him because I do not want him to drop his tail at all. Okay, now let's jump to how to care for them. So these geckos are terrestrial lizards, meaning that they spend most of their time on land. They are also diurnal, so they are active during the daytime, basking on the logs, thermoregulating throughout the enclosure. And what I really like about these guys out there, they are always visible. They never really hide out, so like when you approach the enclosure, they don't run and just hide into the uh, little hides that you have. I still do put a hide in there as well, but they really rarely ever use those hides. They're always out and visible, so that's what I really like about these geckos. So currently, I have my scorpion-tailed gecko in an 18x18x18 18 by 18 by 18 exoterra tank. The structure that I use is play sand from Home Depot, so this is non-toxic play sand to so save for these animals. Yes, I use sand. So what we're trying to do here is match the environment in the wild. In the wild, they have rocks and sand out there. I've talked to other breeders out there. They also use play sand, and um, it's okay for them because it does not cause impaction. Impaction is rare with scorpion tailed geckos, so no need to worry about that. But you do not want to use calcy sand. I believe that's what it's called. I don't never use that stuff, but do not use calcy sand. The smallest I would put them in is a 10 gallon enclosure, uh, but nothing smaller than that. These geckos are not common at all so if you happen to get a pair um, I would house them in a 20 gallon enclosure or something bigger um, like I said more land it's better for them let's go take a look at my enclosure as a reference okay don't mind the Halloween decorations <laughs> Halloween is just around the corner but here is my 18 by 18 by 18 exoterra tank where my scorpion tail gecko is down there on the land so I've been experimenting with this enclosure. Before I got this enclosure, I just had them down here. I know this has a lot of height to it, but I wanted to do a custom background. So this is what I did here with foam. I do plan on uh, changing this background because I don't really like it anymore. I was looking up some tutorial videos on how to do better rock background videos with styrofoam so and also with uh, cement. So I might be just changing this up a little bit, also adding to the corners as well. With him, with him being terrestrial, I do see him climbing a lot on here. So he does climb on these and also his main hiding spot, or I mean not hiding spot, but sleeping spot is up here. Right there, it's his favorite spot to go to. I also put a piece of bark here so that he can thermoregulate. This is kind of hotter towards the heat lamp and down here if he wants to have a little bit cooler, he'll go down here. But this spot right here is his go-to spot as well. They love pieces of bark like this. And also I have a hiding spot there and the hiding spots right there but like I said they hardly ever use that when I first got this enclosure 
Uh, he was going to here, here and there, but now, like, he never goes in there anymore. He just spends most of his time right there, <laughs> like, literally right there, or he'll be right here just staring at me, like, when I'll be walking in here and feeding them, he'll just be looking at me like, hey, are you going to feed me? Like, it's so funny. And also, um, his go-to spot is up there as well. So there, there, and right there. And I'm sure up there, since it's next to the screen, that's the coolest spot in the enclosure. So he goes up there during nighttime to cool down. And then when these automatically turn on uh, during the morning time, he will run down here and go right here to the spots. But right now it's midday, so he is right there next to the water. So I also have plants in here, branches, cactus, rocks down there, and the play sand from Home Depot. So this is an example of how you want it to look like. These geckos like it hot. The basking spot should be around 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And during the winter time or night time, it should not drop below 68 degrees. Also, make sure that the enclosure is big enough so that they can thermoregulate, meaning that they can go to heat up under the basking spot. And also, if they want to cool down, they have this place to go to on the other side of the enclosure to cool down. So, if it's too hot all the time, that might not be too good for them. So put the heat lamp on one side of the enclosure on top of the screen instead of the middle. Scorpion tail geckos also need UVB lighting. This right here is a 5.0 Repisan T5 fixture from Zoomed. There you go Eric, he's <laughs> learning some stuff. So yeah guys, UVB light is essential for scorpion tail geckos. This right here is a 5.0 but later in the future you want to upgrade to, to a 10.0. 10 10 See I know my stuff. Eric, you know your stuff, you know, right? <laughs> you're learning. These geckos are 100% insect eaters, so I always provide a wide variety of insects like small dubia roaches, small crickets, wax worms as treats, uh, what else? Small mealworms. So they have to be small, they cannot be larger than the gecko's head. Also, be sure to gut load your insects before you feed them to your scorpion tail geckos or any other kind of reptiles you may have. You should also dust your feeder insects with calcium D3 and with vitamins at least two times a week. I feed him every other day, but he eats a little bit. He eats like two insects per feeding. So even if they are a desert species of geckos, I always provide a shallow bowl of water in any of my reptiles enclosures. I also mist them two times a week, uh, just so he can lick the drops of water off his eyes and face. That's another way for him to drink water because I rarely ever see him drinking the water from the bowl, but he does soak in there as well. So. Um, that's a way for him to cool down or just to soak in there or just drink some water possibly. Eric, come join me in the outro. I want to get the other uh, ER bro on the outro as well. I'm here, you guys. You want anything else to add? Not really. There's just one more thing. What? We might hit 50,000 subscribers. 50,000. Yo, look at that. No way. 11 more, guys. Guys, subscribe right 11 now. 11 more and we got it. 50. Come on. Well, we lost one. <laughs> guys, Come people on. are unsubscribing because they want to be the 50,000, I bet. Come back, please. But Come yeah, guys, 50,000. Man, what a milestone. I never it's crazy. thought we'll be able to reach that milestone. Like, we got so excited when we reached 100. 100. Right? I recorded that, guys. 100. I recorded my reaction at school. That's crazy. crazy. But thank you so much all for subscribing and supporting this channel. Today's post notification shout out goes to... It was, actually, you know what? Almost all 50,000 of you guys. <laughs> all 50,000 of you. Shout Almost. out goes to all of you guys. Yeah, thank you so you, much for all the support. 49,988 <laughs> of you guys. Okay guys, I hope this scorpion tailed gecko care video was helpful. If you have any questions, comment them down below and I'll try to get to every single one of you guys. And also guys, we might, we, we're not might, we probably will be making a separate video of us hanging oh, yeah, 50,000. Oh yeah, for sure. Game our reaction, so that, just expect that guys, coming up soon. The countdown for this, we should definitely do it. I'm so excited. Put on the TV. I'm so excited. Pop bottle, just kidding. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out. Peace.